Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Your Practice podcast. In today's episode, I'm talking with South African chiropractor, Dr. Rob Delgado. Um, He spends most of his time now, though, coaching health practitioners on how to use the knowledge and expertise they already have to build an online business. Now, whether that be a coaching business or whether that be a business where they're putting together digital courses. Now, in this interview, we talked a lot about the growing trend of brick and mortar businesses moving online. This is something I think that has been accelerated, particularly with COVID. But it is something that's super attractive to us, particularly as health practitioners, especially if we have a vision um, where we want to reach a lot of people. The best way to do that is go online and take your message one to many. I've often been frustrated and I've voiced it a lot in the podcast in the past because if you're just kind of flicking through Facebook and or Instagram, there's plenty of coaches out there that will tell you that this is incredibly easy. It's not. There are lots of hurdles that need to jump if you were to go from a brick and mortar business to an online business. And we talk all about those in this episode. So here's the three key takeaways you'll get from learning, uh, from learning, from watching, from listening to this episode. The first is, is that Rob has a good process of going through to teach you what is the expertise that you already have that people will be prepared to pay for. This was a great key point that Rob spoke about. Second, we had a fantastic chat all about the technology because you're going to need to learn some new things. Um, you know, they're uh, putting together websites, writing emails, all those kind of things. There are some new skills. It's never been easier than now, but Rob will take you through the very basics that you need to learn. And then third and finally, we'll talk a lot about imposter syndrome because that's one of the big barriers, hurdles that holds so many of us back from getting into the online world. Now, if you've listened to this podcast for any time, then you're going to be aware that I have a level of skepticism in around the woo-woo, um, law of attraction, those kind of things. But in this episode, Rob told a story that floored me in a way that no other story in the world of law of attraction ever has beforehand, so much so that I may well be becoming a convert into the land of the woo. Without any further ado, let's jump on in, enjoy the interview, here's Dr. Rob. Welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast, where we guide natural health and wellness experts through the pitfalls of marketing. Each episode, you'll learn simple, effective, easily actionable, and heart-centered marketing strategies. And here's your host, Angus Pike. Rob Delgado, welcome to the Marketing Your Practice podcast. How are you, my friend? I'm very good. Thanks for having me, Angus. It, um, it's taking a little bit of um, to and fro for us to organize this. I'm sure we'll talk about the major reason um, in a moment there too. So uh, how's things in South Africa at the moment? Oh, really good. I mean, as good as it can be. Obviously, we also go through the craziness here, but um, at the at the moment, things are, are pretty calm, and uh, you know, people are going about their their normal business. So uh, I can't complain. It's it's going really well at the moment. And you're in Cape Town. I'm in Cape Town. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. One of my um, one of my favorite places is in the world is is Cape Town. Um, at the end of 1995, I took a summer off and I travelled in around South Africa with a good friend of mine, Tony Rose, who was on here, and yeah, we ended up for a couple of weeks in um, in Cape Town, and we were staying in a place that we was very cheap accommodation, and there seemed to be all these people kind of often at all different times of the night coming in and out. And a lot of um, really interesting kind of young women in the place, which I think was why Tony and I were staying there. And at <laughs> yeah. night three, we realized that basically we were staying in a makeshift brothel. So no brothel. Um, yeah, it was wild. There was a whole kind of brothel running in this kind of what we thought was a hostel, but super fun yeah. people. And uh, still to this day, I wonder if this, because I often think about this word, we went up in is the Table Mountains kind of up behind, right? And we went hiking, which was referred to as klumfing. Is that the right word? Clu- is, it, is it kloofing? Kloofing. Yeah. Yes. So kloofing is usually you're going up a ravine or up yes. like a, a gap in a mountain or, or a river. Yeah. So that's what, so we hiked up and we came down the ravine where there that's would be it. times where we would be swimming in the most gorgeous, pristine, crystal clear yeah. water backpacks yeah. on sheer rock cliffs either side and then we'd get to a little waterfall and jump off it that's um that's, that's a few thing, yeah. it, it is it is one of the most stunning things i've ever done in my life and i think back about that often kloofing i've put an extra some extra letters in there anyway i'm so excited <laughs> about our chat today we're going to get into two before we jump into that let's give our listeners a bit of a background story in terms of what brought you mm-hmm. to literally where you are today and then um 
let's get going. Okay, great. I mean, uh, I qualified as a chiropractor 2006 um, in, in South Africa. Uh, this is in Durban. Um, as I finished, I, I had a, an, a feeling that there was more to this profession than I was taught. So um, I jumped on a plane and went straight to the UK um, and uh, became a, an associate in a practice in, in North London, which was a high volume kind of vitalistic subluxation based practice, which was basically like a different language to me, you know, the way I was trained. Mm -hmm. um, so I dived head into it because I was interested in it. Um, and, I, and I did what everyone told me to do. And uh, I, I built a, a pretty uh, successful practice. I think we were at like a 300 a week type practice. Yeah. Right. Um, and I was, I was supposed to be there three months. I ended up being six years. I'm very blessed to, you know, the thing about Europe is, as you're aware, in the US is there's so many great seminars and great speakers, you know, so I use that time to travel around um, the Europe and the US uh, to go to seminars and, and learn from the greats. And then after about six years, I missed the sun. Um, so I decided uh, to move back. Um, and it wasn't just that, I, I was exhausted, you yes. know, and, and I realized that although my practice was very successful, it wasn't me. You know, it yeah. wasn't it wasn't my ideal, and I decided I was going to come back home uh, to Cape Town and then create my ideal practice. So I did that um, and uh, opened up in Cape Town. Um, and on the backdrop of this, and doctors will that are like this will know, I always had this this pulling towards having a bigger impact than I currently was. Mm. So at first, I thought it was going to be seeing ultra high volume is going to be the way to do that. Um, and uh, then that exhausted me. So I dropped the volume that I saw. And then I thought, you know, becoming a, a speaker, because uh, I love teaching and I did the mm. chestnut train, James Chestnut training and all that. So I became like a corporate speaker, traveling around on my little Vespa scooter. So in between uh, patients, I'd jump on my Vespa, I'd cruise to a, a bank or an insurance company, do a presentation, jump back on and come back, which I loved as well. But I became, it became uh, very clear very quickly that selling my time had drawbacks. Yes. And uh, I was just always, always busy, busy, busy. You know, I couldn't answer my phone. You know, I was starting early in the morning. I was going till late in the afternoon. The professional speaking was helping uh, from a financial perspective, but it was just making me more busy. Yes. Um, yes. So it was always in my mind. So I thought, then I'm going to build an associate practice with hundreds of associates, and that's going to give me free time. And I find it just gave me more headaches. Okay. Um, and uh, so to fast forward a little bit, um, where my journey started was I got a call from my accountant the one day, and uh, she said, I need to speak to you urgently. And uh, I thought that was a little bit strange. That's so never said, okay, a call uh, that you want. No, no, never good. And she said, I want to come see you. So um, she sat down with me um, and she said, first of all, I just want to say congratulations to you um, because your practice has done very well. In fact, it's done better than we expected. Um, and I said, oh, well, that's great. Did you come all the way here to tell me that? She's like, no, um, there's been an error in our software and with a staff member or whatever. And we've basically been leaving out as a part of your income when we've been working out your tax liabilities and we've been doing that yeah. for about 18 months cool. so this was in january sometime so i said okay well, what does that mean she says well you the the amount you owe uh, at your next tax payment is a little bit higher than you probably anticipate so i said well what is it and she told me the number um and my my blood went cold i mean it was a huge number because it had accumulated over 18 months mm. i was living a pretty good lifestyle at that point you know um wife and kids and things like that um and she said as i said when is this money due and she said well end of feb um so fast forward that what that meant was credit cards to the max a business overdraft to the absolute max it, yeah. it took all my savings um, but the worst part was she said by the way it also means we have to catch up because you're behind now um, so you're gonna have to put away more and more every single month so you can catch up so I suddenly went from being a relatively successful person having a good lifestyle to being in a cash flow hell mm. um, and it was a rough ride you know for a good six months, really, really rough. Um, and anyone who's been under the burden of debt like that uh, knows how it, it takes, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it fuses into every part of your life. Um, and I woke up one morning, I got to the point where I said, um, I need to do something. I can't carry on like this. I don't want to go into high volume again, 
but yes. I need to, I need more um, kind of income coming in. Um, and I've got this feeling you're going to go online. Yes. Um, and you're going to help people online, whichever way you can. I was very um, interested in personal development at that point. I was mm -hmm. a big Tony Robbins fan and, you know, all of that. And I was extremely interested in mindset. So I got this thought that you can help people online with their mindset. That's part of your purpose. Um, and you're going to now learn how to create this online business. Yeah. Um, and uh, then I went on a journey that, uh, and hopefully we'll have time for me to tell you some of the stories that happened. Uh, but I ended up creating an online mindset coaching business. Yes. Um, that was my first. Um, and uh, uh, it, it became profitable and it started to give me freedom in my practice. And I was able to take more time off. Um, I used to start work at 6.40 a.m., yeah, which okay. meant I was waking up at 5 a.m. to do my morning routine before work. I wasn't taking the kids to school. I almost never fetched them from school because I was working from 6.40 till, till 5.00. And when the online business started gaining traction and I started earning a, a scalable type of income through that, I immediately dropped my hours. I started practice later. Um, I dropped my Mondays. So I only worked four days a week. I started taking my kids to school, which, you know, looking back, I'm so grateful I did that and I didn't miss that. Mm -hmm. um, so what online did for me is it, two things. One is that the impact, which I was always craving, has increased. Yes, exponentially because yes. I have clients all over the world. Yes, um, and yes. also from an income point of view, it's um, it's done very well from an income point of view. But it's not based on me selling my time. And I think for a doctor, um, that is our biggest challenge: is we are paid generally paid quite well. Yes, but we are selling our time, and the more successful you become, the less free you feel. Yeah, and uh, th that's it's a big problem, and uh, that's what I try and do now is is help other doctors go online so that they can start getting more freedom. Mm. It's a common journey and in that so many of the people I speak to, we get so excited about what we have to offer the world, our patients in front of us, that the natural next step is often, how do I get this to more people? Um, how do I go from one to one? And as you mentioned beforehand, we get paid quite well to be working mm -hmm. one for one. Um, you know, we can $60, $80 an adjustment and, you know, some people are spending a minute, some are spending 15 but there is always that idea that if I'm not there and I'm not doing the thing, then I don't get paid. And so more and more, particularly kind of COVID last year, there seemed to be more practitioners starting to go, mm, this is a really, I'm really vulnerable in this business model because if I can't see the people, and because the difference that I noticed was this, is you had a lot of great chiropractors that through no fault of their own were all of a sudden told, no, stay home. Like you yeah. can't, this is, you know, the people aren't allowed to come and see you. And that level of vulnerability for many who had great lives, but it also required that they have good incomes coming in each and every month also. So you mentioned before, because you, you now teach a lot of this stuff um, as well. If we, if we go right back to kind of COVID, because I, I, I noticed that when COVID kind of started, I saw lots of different coaches reaching out saying, you've got to go online. It's where the easy money is, all this kind of stuff there too. And because um, my experience, I have an online business. My experience is it's anything but easy. Like there are a lot of yeah. new skills to learn. Um, it, it is incredibly leverageable. Um, it's flexible. It's all those things. But it's not just, man, online and, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be just changing my whole chiropractic income from a great income there. So what I'd really love to go through today is what are the hurdles that people have when wanting to go online? You decided kind of mindset. Um, there's lots of different things that we could talk about. How does somebody choose a niche? How do they get through mm. the technology hurdles right the way through to when they make their first dollar? So um Let's chat with that. What are the biggest hurdles that you see people have with them kind of transitioning into online? Um, I'd say the, 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 the biggest fear is um, what, what niche, who do I help and how do I help them? So the, the whole yeah. thing of what, what will I offer? Yeah. Um, so we'll talk about that because that's important. Um, and then the second thing is, is technology. Yeah. Um, the, the overwhelm of, you know, websites and, and things like that. Also, um, copywriting, you know, most chiropractors, it's not a skill set, you know, getting messaging right. You know, yeah. some, some chiropractors are amazing communicators, but often when it comes to putting things down on paper, that's their weakness and design. What should a website look like? 
Um, and then there's a, a small section where they have imposter syndrome and they don't want to go uh, to create videos. I'm sure you get this. Yeah. They don't want to go on videos. They're scared of judgment. They're scared of criticism. You know, I had all of those things. So I'd say that the, the classic problem people come up with is choosing a niche. Um, and it's exceptionally important that it's done well. I think we should talk about that. Yeah. Um, they don't understand the, the bits and pieces of an online business. And I'll, I'll go through that as well um, mm. because it's just like a chiropractic practice. And then the rest is uh, mindset challenges, imposter syndrome, fear of failure, fear of criticism, mm. all those things, or the illusion that I don't have the time. Yeah. You know, I was, while I was blessed was I had my back up against the wall. Yes. So it was like, you either do something or you're going to be moving out of your house soon and telling your wife we're moving in with the parents, you know? So it forced me to, to just get rid of the excuses because my excuse was, I don't have the time. I have a busy practice. I have, a, 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 at that point, it was a, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. I have this, I have this. So um, one blessing of having your back up against the wall is the excuses drop. Mm -hmm. um, which is, I think, a reason why a lot of successful people I've come across have had that moment in mm -hmm. their life where, and I'm sure COVID has put a lot of doctors in that moment right now, mm -hmm. because I'm well aware that even as the world starts opening up, most practices are still not at 100% of where they were, mm -hmm. you know, so, and, and I'm sure that's uh, created a lot of stress for people. I, I've been thinking a lot about that concept that you talked about. So often in our life, we want to move away from pain we want to get away from rock bottom but man as far as a motivator goes to get us making change there's nothing like rock bottom to you know finally get us to take action it's yeah. it's one of the challenges that i have with my coaching clients and sometimes it's very <clears throat> hard for me to not want to rescue them but it's like you know what you'll reach rock bottom and then you'll start to take action um also i, I can see the challenge because as a you know, whether you're a chiropractor, a podiatrist, a naturopath, whoever's kind of listening to this right now, there's a box that we fit in that says, here's Angus, what you will do when you go to work each day. Yes. Here's how people will come to see you. Here's about what you will charge. Here's how the service will look. And so whilst there's some variances inside of that, you know, there's a bit of a rule book. But the moment you say to me, oh, Angus, you're now going to go online, all of those rules come down. Like, you know, there's, there's so much freedom there. And along with that comes that whole concept of the paradox of choice. You know, more choice often doesn't make me happier and, and easier as well. So let's start with niche. You know, what with the people that you have worked with, what kind of areas could people be going into? How do we search inside us to find an area where we might have some expertise and authority that people might be prepared to pay us for? Yeah. So first of all, let's talk about why we need a niche. Um, and it's because the, the challenge with online. Okay. So it's the best time in history to go online. Yes. Why is that? Because it's so easy. Yep. You can pick up your phone and you've got the same power as, you know, television channels had 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, so all the, 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 the barriers to going online have, have gone. So that's the good news. The yep. bad news is that it's become so easy, Yeah. which means that there is a lot of noise. So the question is, and this is what a lot of doctors ask me, is how do I say I want to go into health coaching or nutrition coaching or mindset? How do I stand out in the crowd? I had the same yeah. problem. I would say to myself, I'm not Tony Robbins. You know, why would anybody choose me over all these other things? So how you get around that is you choose a very, very specific type of person with a very, very specific type of problem. And you specialize in that problem. Mm. What that does is two things. Number one is it makes your competition irrelevant because you're now offering something different to your competition. Yes. And number two, you're able to solve a very deep problem. So I'll yeah. give an example. Yeah. Say um, you, you love nutrition and mm -hmm. you could say, I want to help people improve their nutrition. Now that's really broad. It's very unclear. It's a lot of noise out there. Mm. But if you say, I want to help people with, fibromyalgia reduce the inflammatory markers in their body mm. using a step-by-step -step nutritional system suddenly that competition is irrelevant yes because you're specializing in a specific problem you can go deep you can really go deep into solving that problem which means that your target customer is willing to pay for it yes so the deeper problem you can solve the more someone's willing to pay for it a lot of doctors and i mean i started my first 
um, offer online was $200 US dollars. And I was like, who's going to pay that? You know, um, now um, I have offers that are $15,000. But the difference is the, the, the problem that I fix now is deeper because I've specialized. Yes. So that's why you must choose a niche. Chiropractors generally, or say doctors of, of natural health providers, generally yes. go into a couple of things. Number one is is the obvious low hanging fruit is some type of lifestyle coaching, like you yes. know the eat well, move well, think well. I mean, like I was trained uh, James Chestnut, and what's great about that is it links very well with your practice. One of the easiest things you can do is if you have a practice, is create something that your practice members want, mm. or that would. Um, improve your services in your practice so for instance if you're a chiropractor that works people uh, more long term or wellness based practice mm. if you created a lifestyle program online and a percentage of your uh, practice members went on to that you would get better results in your in your practice with yeah, certainly yep without a shadow of a doubt so it's completely congruent so there's that the next would be condition specific um and uh, i think there's a huge market for this where you become an expert in helping someone with a specific problem like i said fibromyalgia mm -hmm. or sciatica or um, tiredness whatever it is something that you've either experienced yourself or you're passionate of working with so i've got people that have started my program that are doing like tension headaches mm -hmm. because they said when you go online there's a lot of programs on migraine but mm -hmm. no one ever talks about the tension headache so her niche now is females uh I think 35 to 45 high achievers work in corporate jobs, you know, and, and they just getting paralyzed by daily tension headaches. Anybody yes. who's been in practice knows that that is rough. Um, and it, it sits so well with her practice because she sees a lot of patients with that problem. Now she can say, okay, I'm going to adjust you. And I've created an online program to plug into this. And then she just sends them to, a funnel in that direction a certain percentage take on that program mm. um so it works really well so that's the, the, the second one the third one is is, is business coaching and i mean yep. you, i suppose you would fall into that i would fall into that where you helping other practitioners uh, get better at certain things so let's say you've built uh, an associate driven practice mm. let's say you're uh, amazing at attracting new patients let's say you have a very high retention rate uh, let's say you've built a pediatric practice. So then you could help other doctors who want the same thing. And that would be a lot around uh, business coaching. Um, one of my, my real success stories of late is a, a Spanish chiropractor who, who saw a gap in helping young Spanish speaking chiropractors because yes. they, a lot of the coaches out there are US based and are speaking in English and the Spanish speakers are, there's a disconnect because it's not their first language. And he started with us. We, we, we got together an offer very quickly and he's a, he earned um, $4,000 on his very first webinar before he even knew what he was doing. Yes. But that's because he found a target market with a very specific problem and he's able to go deep into that problem. Yeah. Robbie, some of our listeners will be inside of their mind thinking that why not be better off to go after a really general market where there are more people as opposed to instead of me just focusing just on fibromyalgia or fatigue or tension headaches, you know, what if I just focus on chronic disease? Um, mm. What are your thoughts around that when you get asked that question? It, it can be done. And, and, and obviously there's many people that have done it, you know, where you can say, uh, I help people get healthier. Yes. And of course that's, and, and the principles of being healthier are, are, are for everybody, you know, so mm. it's, it's a panacea really. That's how I was trained. You know, if mm. I went going through James Chestnut um, and it can be done. However, it's, it just makes your messaging more difficult mm. because when your target client comes across your stuff, they've got two or three seconds to make a decision of whether they're going to actually look at your stuff. And yes. if your, your hook doesn't knock them straight in the face and grab them by their collar, it's quite difficult for you to grab attention. Yes. Whereas if you say, if someone comes across your website and they're like, I free mothers from the pain and suffering of fibromyalgia. And there's a lady who's a mother with fibromyalgia. Yeah. She's going to stop, Yes. you know, and she's going to look at it. So it is possible. However, what I would say is if you say going broad and you're going to help say somebody with their health overall, you, I think what you should still do is 
go after a very specific desire that that person wants. Now, mm. do they want to live to a hundred? Yes. You know, do they do they want to um, live chronic disease free for the rest of their life? So it's still a specific desire. Yes. And then you start targeting a certain person. But because I will tell you this, if you're going to try help everybody right from the beginning, mm. you're going to really <laughs> struggle. Yeah, because uh, you, you're not going to get your messaging right. If you're Tony Robbins, you can do that because people know you and they understand your brand. But from the beginning, the paradox is the more super niche you go, the more successful you are. And then once you've done that, then you can expand. I was saying to one of my clients yesterday, she's helping athletes. And I said, this does not have to be your forever business. Mm -hmm. This is just getting, um, getting you in the game to help people and in six months to a year's time you can take the exact same framework you're using for this particular business and you can change it yes you know you change your niche i during lock, lockdown i changed my niche and my offer in a week yeah. and i just used the same system again um and that business is now uh, one of my major businesses mm. i think I, I have this conversation lots of times with practitioners in terms of them thinking that, you know, I'm wanting to help everybody. And the wanting to help everybody is a kind of bit like McDonald's and Coca-Cola and Nike marketing. And it works really great when you have a billion dollar budget, works really great when you have a team of thousands of marketers to help you out doing it. But when we're a one person show with limited amount of budget and time, we, we have to find another way to break through you kind of mentioned it before the number of messages that are that we're competing for mm. we have this concept i like to refer to as an you know an intentional blindness you know our, our brain to stop being overwhelmed is constantly on a subconscious level saying is this for me is this for me is this for me until it finally comes across you know i help mothers with you know as you mentioned beforehand um, the other mistake that i see people often making too is that we have this wellness focus as opposed to like, I don't want to focus on conditions. I want to kind of focus on, on wellness. Yeah. And I understand that also, because it's been a drive of mine in practice that, that that's, but the challenge is human nature is, is that our audience, our potential customers, patients there too, are much more likely to spend their time, effort and energy fixing a problem than they are heading towards wellness as, as well. I can see from here that once somebody starts to pick something and if we kind of head down, maybe the tension headache thing, the two, the next thing that often kicks up that I see happen, there's one of two things, the technology, but it's, it's the imposter syndrome. This is, well, who am I to be helping out business coaching or lifestyle coaching, these kind of things, this idea of who am I comes up. How do we deal with that? And how do we push that to the side? And where does imposter syndrome even fit into this whole process? So this is this is massive. It's it's the biggest challenge. I, I I will say on record at any point, you give me any doctor, um, and I will be able to make him him or her successful online. But the one thing that will uh, I need to break through is the imposter syndrome. Yeah. And uh, let, let's talk about this. Number one, you first have to understand that everybody has it. Yeah. I have it. Yeah. I felt nervous before this interview, <laughs> and I've been uh, interviewed many times. So mm. Tony Robbins has it. Deepak Chopra, everybody has it. It's just part of ego and it's part of human nature. So mm -hmm. the first thing you have to accept that everybody gets it. The second thing is you don't have to be the world expert at anything. You just have to be further down the road than someone else. Yeah. And that changes everything. So for instance, I went into mindset coaching and the imposter syndrome was ironically very big with me because I was like, I'm not a mindset coach of 20 years experience. I've, I've read lots of books and I've, I've learned a lot of things along the way. Um, and when I spoke to my mentor, he first of all told me that everybody gets it. And the second thing he said is you just got to be a little bit further down the line. So who were you two years ago? Yeah. Your ideal client is your understanding two years ago. And all you're doing is you're taking that person from where they are now towards where you are. Mm -hmm. So, which means that you don't have to be the world renowned expert in whatever you, you're doing. You just have to be further along than your target audience. Mm -hmm. And if you're a doctor or a chiropractor or a naturopath, you're further along than most people. I can tell you, yeah. there's teenagers out there that are, have got million dollar businesses. Yes. Um, they can barely tie their own shoelaces. You are a, a highly educated 
um, experienced uh, doctor, there are millions of people that you are ahead of in just about every single sphere. So accept that it's there. And remember that also, this is very important. Remember when you started, say from a chiropractic point of view, when you started adjusting and you did that first side posture adjustment. Yes. And you got the leg up and the, the clinicians watching you and your hands shaking. And then you do this weird little jump and nothing happens, you know, and then the face goes red. And, you know, or I, I remember the worst is when you're an associate and the primary doc asks you to <laughs> adjust it. You're like, oh my goodness. So that's because it was, it was new to you. Then- yes. 10 years in practice, you literally put the person on the side, you're not even thinking about it, and, and you give them a, a great adjustment. Well, hopefully you are thinking about it and you're being present, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? It's it's it becomes second nature. Then you it's very common then for you to devalue what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I can't believe this guy just gave me $60 for just pushing on it, mm -hmm. you know. But you forget that it's become your first language now. It used to be your third language. So what happens is in your mind, you devalue what you know because it becomes, it's so easy for you. But for you talking to a student who's just come out, it's still their third language. And what you thinking is just nothing to them is highly valuable. Does that make mm. sense? No, it, it does. And so beautifully put this concept. Have you ever read um, that Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art? No. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's one of my favourite books of all time. Inside of that, um, Stephen Pressfield has a couple of metaphors. He talks about the muse, M-U-S-E, and the muse is really, it's, it's really quite a spiritual concept that this is our calling in life, mm. is that there's some part of us that's calling for us, whether it be for you to open the online business, whatever it is there mm. too. And he said what comes along with, this calling is he refers to as resistance and resistance. Yeah. He says, the bigger, the goal, the bigger, the resistance. It, and it's so beautiful the way that he talks about it. And regardless of who you are. And as you talked about beforehand, when I, you know, when you look at the great people from, you know, Beyonce to Jodie Foster to, you know, you name it there that talk about the nerves they still have every time they go out on stage that, you know, Jodie Foster, who has won numerous Academy Awards, still worries that someday someone's going to realize that she's a fraud and they're going to come and take her Academy Awards back that I was interested recently in one of Seth Godin's books. He actually talked about imposter syndrome and said how important it is. It's normal. And it's probably the sign of that you're not a sociopath, you know, that, that it's, 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 it is, it is there too. And such beautiful concepts that you talk about in terms of, we don't have to have all the solutions, but do we have the solution for somebody? You know, can we be just a little bit um, ahead and, also? And the, the big thing is, is, and this is what I'm really strong with with my students is the big thing is to be authentic, you know? Mm. And, and when I did my mindset coaching, I would often say to my first clients, you know, I don't have all the answers, you know, and I'm learning along with you, but I've, there's, some, there's some concepts I've learned that I believe are of value to you and I'm going to teach them to you. And you come across as, completely open and vulnerable yes i was very vulnerable um, with my clients in the mindset coaching especially and the paradox there is you think vulnerability shows weakness vulnerability is the greatest strength you can yes. show um, and your clients actually get attracted to that vulnerability rather than the opposite whereas when you try to be this know all old person you you disconnect so it to, for me it took the pressure off where i was like you know um, working with someone from a mindset point of view and saying, look, I don't have all the answers straight away, but I'm going to, with an open heart, serve you to the best of my ability and teach you what I've learned in my experience. And I believe that it will be of value to you. And it takes that pressure off. The imposter syndrome goes, um, my, my, my mentor used to say, the only people that don't have imposter syndrome are the actual imposters. Yes. You know, it's, yeah. it's the rest of us that are actually trying to help people and trying to serve people. We will always have that imposter syndrome and i'm definitely going to get that book because it's that um that yearning i mean my, my, one of my favorite books is the alchemist and he talks about your heart just pulling yes. you towards something um and that's how i felt for years there was this this heart telling me intuitively your purpose is bigger than what you're currently doing um but whenever your heart tells you to do something there's always a little bit of fear Yes. Which is why the most important uh, characteristic to have is courage, 
or to have your back up against the wall like like um, I did. But um, mm. I, I have to tell you a story just for a second because mm. the, the craziness of this, when you, when you go towards your purpose and you actually make that decision like I did, what happens is, in, or what my belief is, the universe starts conspiring to, mm. to, to get you there. Now, how did that happen with me? I made that decision that I was going to be a mindset coach. I needed help. I needed help developing how I was going to do the mindset coaching. I also needed help around um, creating this business. It was not even in the next few days that a patient walked into my practice being a mindset coach, you know, and that's helping people become mindset coaches. And I went to lunch with him and he said, I'll work with you. Um, and uh, he was a very high level coach. And he said, I'll tell you what, I like you and you've helped me with my spine. So I'm going to give you my mate's rate. It's 2000 US dollars a month. Um, and then, and I need a year commitment. You will sign a contract saying that you will commit to one year without giving up. If you give up, that's fine, but you're still going to pay me for the year. Um, and if you don't commit to that, I'm not interested because I'm not interested in people that are testing the waters. Now, remember my, um, my ba bank overdraft is at maximum. My credit cards at maximum. Yes. My practice is yes. suffering because I'm so anxious all the time. Um, that is the most difficult and fearful decision of my life. And I must say, I must give my, my wife kudos on this because I told her this. It, most wives have said, are you crazy? I'm, you know, you're telling me I can't even go buy nice groceries. I'm just going to the cheaper grocery store. Now you want to pay this guy that you just made $2,000 a month for a year. And she said, it's your purpose. Do it. You know, mm -hmm. we'll, 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 we'll eat bread. So um, not that I like eating bread. So um, anyway, so I started. Okay, now this is where the crazy stuff starts. He said to me, look, you need to understand um, how this whole online thing works. So you need to go find some people that are experts in this and you need to study them. And the two people that, that uh, propped up first, the one guy that was always on my Facebook feed was Ty Lopez, um, who's a, obviously a big name in online. Now, he wasn't really my style as one of those guys that's, you know, always standing in front of his Lambo, you know, mm. and he's... he's girlfriend's always wearing like a bikini but so he wasn't my style however I was well aware he knew what he was talking about yes. when it came to online so I started yeah. following him and then uh, the name Russell Brunson came up so um, I ordered his book called Expert Secrets yes um, and uh, I started reading it and in the beginning of the book he talks about a guy called Jacob Hiller and Jacob was interested in learning how to jump higher he was a basketball player yes um, and uh, long story short he ended up building a $10 million empire teaching athletes how to jump higher. Mm. And I, I read this and I thought, this is this whole niche thing. Because at that point, I was like everyone else. I want to go abroad. I want to go abroad. And, and I was like, this guy had a $10 million business just teaching athletes how to jump higher. So I go and I tell my coach this. And he's like, yeah, riches are in the niches, you know. So mm. I'm still reading the book. Patient walks in. He's American. He sits down. I look at his file and I say, I see he says, trainer. On, on his profession. So I say, what type of training do you do? He says, I teach athletes how to jump higher. So I look at the top of my file and it's Jacob Hiller. No. One, one week after me reading this book, no. I look up, I've got, I've got goosebumps now just talking about it. And I say, you know that I just read about you a week ago. And he's like, oh yeah, Russell Brunson. Yeah, I know him well. And I said, how did you make this appointment? He said, I walked past, he's on holiday. I walked past your plaque on the wall and I thought to myself, I've never been to a chiropractor. And he walked in as a walk-in and he just booked and there he was sitting in front of me. So I said, you and me are going to lunch. So I took him out to lunch and we spoke and, and he taught me a lot and we're still in contact today. Um, but it gets even crazier than this. Because while I'm talking to him, I go back to the practice and a couple walks in. It was mm. a, she's a British, a British woman and an American guy. They were engaged. Mm. And there were these online entrepreneurs, you know, digital nomads and uh, going all over the world. Mm. Uh, and they owned um, a yoga clothing brand. And uh, I, they were very, very successful. And I worked with them for about a week. They were also on holiday. Um, and uh, then I said to them, you know, you've done quite well online. How did you learn how to do it? And she said, well, my husband's best friend taught us a lot of what we know. We used to work with him and um, he's actually going to be the best man in our wedding in two weeks time. So I said, okay, who's your, who's your husband's best friend? And she said, Ty Lopez. Wow. And again, I've got goosebumps now because this all happened in about a four week 
a four week time period. And I believe that when you go, when you start taking courageous action in line with your purpose, you start yeah. getting sent signs that you are on the right track. And whenever I went through difficulties, because you spoke about obstacles, you do hit obstacles in starting any new business. Mm -hmm. But whenever I hit an obstacle, I would just go back and go, yes, but Jacob Hiller walked into my office. Yeah. So that means, I, in my belief, that there's a greater power behind this. And that gave me the confidence to keep pushing, keep pushing until I had my, my breakthrough. Yeah. I just have kind of courageous action in the direction of your dreams. Yeah, that's a pretty wild... That that's um, a heck of a coincidence, isn't it? You know, it. You can't make this stuff up. Yeah, that's wild, wild. Um, let's talk about the technology challenge because there are some new skills that we need to learn, um, and it is easier now than ever. It's not easy. I don't think it's easy anyway. But if I can learn it at forty six years of age, and and can continue to learn this kind of stuff, then I think most people probably can. So yeah. what, let's start with this. What are the basic kind of technology skills? Like, what do I need to learn? Do I need to know to build a whole website, email, video, socials, funnels? What's necessary? What are the basics? So you need three things. One is you need um, a traffic source. So traffic is obviously leads or new mm. customers coming into your business. So that's the first thing you need. The second yep. thing is you need some type of um, sales funnel which and I'll expand that in a little bit. And the third thing you need is an offer to make mm. that person. So you need mm. those three things. From a technology point of view, I always say this to my students, you can get to a million dollar business by having one traffic source, one sales funnel and one offer. Yeah. Okay, now let's go through that. One traffic source, obviously social media is the lowest hanging fruit. Yeah. So what I would say is choose one social media platform that you really like, um, depending on what you're offering and who you're offering it to, you get Instagram, which is slightly younger demographic, Facebook, slightly older, you get podcasts, you get YouTube, you, we help people choose a specific platform based on their audience, you choose one. Your sales funnel offer, the good news is you, um, you can use templates. Yes. I mean, we, we offer all our clients templates, um, and then you can get a tech person to take that template and then just make some changes for next to nothing. Um, and then you've got a brilliant website. Mm -hmm. So that's done and you can delegate most of that. Um, and then your offer, um, that's sometimes the difficult part. You need to create an offer that is very, very enticing to your ideal client. Yeah. So we call it an irresistible offer. You want an offer so great that they, they'll they jump up from their favorite dinner, run upstairs and search for their credit card. You know, you want it like so that they get excited about it. Mm -hmm. And we have processes to take people through to, to create that offer. Mm -hmm. But from a technology point of view, you literally, my, my, my mindset coaching business, all I used was my phone to, to post videos on Facebook, on mm -hmm. a Facebook group. That was it. Um, I, I had an email uh, program. I think I was using in those days, Aweber, which is an email platform. Yes. Yep. Um, yep. I used Zoom and that was it. Yes. Um, and that business was uh, when it's in its early days was earning, you know, three or four thousand dollars a month, completely part time. Um, yeah. I was putting in a couple of hours a week in it because it was group coaching. Yes. And that was all the technology, you yeah. know. So if you have the, the bare basics, technology is not an issue. You can obviously as time gets by, you add more things and you add better videos and you add different softwares. But just from the beginning and I want to say this because in case you have people that have started this already, in my experience, the people have been successful. You get you get three types of people. One is, okay, they never start, but we won't talk about that. Mm -hmm. The second is people follow the blueprint that mm -hmm. we give them and they do it step by step exactly as it is. But the, sometimes what happens is you get stuck at a certain section. So let's say choosing the niche, yes. or the niche. And then, and then six weeks later, they haven't moved at all because they stuck at step two. Yes. And this is sometimes where I have to come in and, and, and help them is that you, you can't get stuck. You just got to keep moving. So anyway, they still get through it, but it can take them longer because they get stuck in places. So that's yes. the second group. The most successful people I've seen when I've worked with them and myself is what they do. They choose an, a niche, they choose an offer, and they just put it out there. Yeah. 
they start putting out content every single day about yeah. that specific thing. Um, they grow a little bit of an audience and then they just make an offer. So here's what I did. I went on Facebook. I started talking about mindset stuff. I built up a little bit of an audience. I think I had a, a Facebook group of two or 300 people. So nothing much, but I just mm -hmm. put out videos, me talking, being authentic, being vulnerable. Um, and I said, okay, I'm going to help people um, with a specific thing. I wanted them to experience more fulfillment in their lives. I wanted them to, to follow their dreams. So I said, okay, what kind of offer can I put together? And then I just put it out there. I had nothing created, no course, nothing. I didn't even have a proper website yet. Yes. And I put it out there and said, I'm looking for five people that want to break through their limitations and follow their dream. I think that's what I said. Five people got back to me. I charged them, uh, I think, two or $300 each. And I just started working with them in his, with Zoom. Um, I didn't even know what I was going to do with them. So when module one started, I didn't even know what module two was. Yeah. But number one is it held me accountable to get going. And number two is I learned through working with these people what they wanted and what they needed. And then I could create my course around that. And those people that just do, you know, that don't get stuck, just do. And if it doesn't work out, it's okay. It doesn't work yeah. out, it's okay. You know, that, that, those are the people that are successful quicker. In, in terms of, you know, we need traffic, we need a funnel and we need an offer. Do you think that there's one of those that's more important? Where should most of the energy go? It's the same thing as saying, in a practice, should you worry about new patient acquisition or conversion or retention? Yeah. Which one's more yeah. important? And the, the question, it's, it's, they're all important. Yes. Because if, if, if one's not working, so you could have um, amazing traffic but if you don't have an offer that your mm. audience loves, you, it never becomes a viable business. Or you could have a, an amazing offer, but you have no traffic getting their eyes on it. Um, you know, so it's it's very difficult. I will say where I'd say that where a lot of people get stuck probably is traffic is mm. is a is a big problem for people. Anybody can put up a website, but where they struggle is getting the messaging right on that website. Yes. Um, and this is why with our clients, we, we work with specialist copywriters because messaging is, is, is everything. And if you don't have that skill set, I don't, I, I mean, I'm okay, but I don't have a world-class skill set of messaging. So I, I use my team for that, but they put up a website that looks nice, but there's a very big difference between a website that looks nice and a website that takes your ideal client through the psychological journey until they get to a point where they want to take action. That's very different. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's in the messaging. And then the offer, they just create an offer that's, that's, that's cool, but it's not enticing enough. It's not juicy. So people love their stuff, but then they look at the offer and they go, man, my wallet's in the car. I'll, I'll look at it next week. And then they, they don't make enough sales from it. Yeah. I think one of the things that, and because you touched on it there also, is it's, we start these businesses as a solopreneur often I'm going to do, and therefore we think that we actually have to do everything. Um, and we don't, there are so many different people depending on what needs to be done. Um, you know, you can head on over to Fiverr and if you know basically what you want your website to be looking like, you can get somebody really good. And I mean, really good for two or 300 bucks. And you can probably get somebody to do it for you for 50, yeah. you know, but, but so the days of, you know, I'll have clients reach out to me saying, look, I'm getting a new website designed. I just had it come back to me. It's going to be five grand. I'm like, no, like it's, it's just, it's not, it, it might look beautiful. It might be done by somebody who's an artist, but it's going to miss so many of those elements that we can yeah. kind of work with it. You don't have to do all this yourself. There are copywriters that will help you. There are mentors that you could, could work with as, as, as well. Yeah. I'd like to kind of explore a little more because you do, you help people with a, a lot of this kind of stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. When you work with people, how does that kind of, how does that go? What happens? They come in, do you, do you help them right the way? Do people come to you saying, look, I have no idea what I want to do. I just know I want to go online. Um, or how far yeah. along the journey does somebody need to be before they reach out to you? So what we specialize is the people that are, are really starting out. 
you know, so that want to go from zero to like, say a six figure business. Mm -hmm. um, so when we work with someone, we start right at the beginning with mm -hmm. who, what is your niche going to be? So a lot of people that join us have no idea. They're yeah. just like, I, I know I want to go online. I know I can help people online. I'm not a hundred percent sure. So we start with choosing a niche. We start with choosing an ideal client. Um, then we start uh, getting your messaging right. So we give you a, um, a system that you use so that you can uh, get the right messaging. Then we help you build an offer that would be very enticing to that target market. Mm. Um, and then we teach you, once you've got all of that, we give you our templates. So we use um, two strategies, um, two website strategies, and we give you the templates and we give you the copy prompts of what copy should go where. You know, yes. So it takes away a lot of that, that um, you know, overwhelm from a technology point of view. Um, then once all that's built, we give you our traffic strategy, which is an organic traffic strategy, which what that means is that it's free using social media. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we, so that's given to you in say a, a digital course or module format. Mm -hmm. But the real power of how we've done it is while you're going through that module and you, it's really blueprinted very step by step, is that you come on weekly and have live calls with an expert in a different field. So for instance, on a Monday, I come on and I answer questions on strategy mindset because I've done it. I've been through it. You know, mm. I know the pain and the obstacles. Then on a Tuesday, we have a, a copywriter, a genius copywriter who comes on and helps you with your copy problems. And then on Wednesday, we have a funnel builder or a website designer. Um, then we just bring on now um, a social media expert. And then we're going to bring on an automation expert to help you automate all this stuff. And what that does is say you get stuck like, what should I call my program? Instead of being like me and take three weeks pulling your hair out, trying to figure out what the thing is, mm -hmm. you come onto a live call and you speak to a $300, $300 an hour copywriter and he looks at your stuff and says, change that to that. Mm -hmm. And that is what changes the game. It's that level of support of specialists in their field, fixing your problems on the spot so that you, when you get stuck, you have somebody to turn to. So in coming, in talking about, like you said, it's not easy. It's one of those things in life that it's simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. Um, and usually we, the problem is we get stuck. And how we fix that is you follow a blueprint and you have support. Yes. The accountability you have is you've got to start and you don't give up. And that's why I said that any doctor on this planet can have a six-figure online business if they start they follow a blueprint and they don't give up that's it yeah uh rob i'm so uh, i'm still blown away by your two stories to be honest I've, I've, I've lost my whole train of thought with regards to all of that um as also it, it, i think in the future that regardless um of whether you want to have a brick and mortar business and that's what you're wanting to do having an element it's you know one of the things i'm very passionate about saying is it's not either or it's not you need to be just online or a brick and mortar business as you said beforehand look i spent a couple of hours each week it bought an extra three or four grand into my practice you know and three or four grand times 12 you know that that really adds up um, you know, yeah. if you're bringing an extra forty or fifty thousand dollars a year, that's a damn good holiday. You know, that adds to an extra yeah. house. That, uh, and if nothing else, maybe it means that you're then actually walking your kids to school um, and picking them exactly. up from school because you can kind of pull back from there, and that's priceless as as well. Robbie, if people are interested in finding out a little bit more about where you are, how they can work from you, learning more from you, where's the best spot for them to go? So they can go to the, the website, uh, cairofreedom.online. Um, that kind of talks a little bit about what we do. And then I've got a webinar that uh, it's a pre-recorded webinar. And uh, I'd, I'd encourage people to watch that because it goes through the steps that you need to go through in order to have a successful online business. Um, and uh, that's basically cairofreedom.online forward slash webinar, but maybe we'll put the, the link somewhere. Well, I'll make sure I've got all of those kind of... Um... Just what, watch that webinar. It goes. It basically goes through um, how I did it. It goes through what the steps you need to take. It goes through what the differences are. So by the end of that, 
you'll you'll kind of know what you're in for um and uh it gives you a good idea and then after you watch that if you want support you just click on the button and you book a, a call and you'll speak to me personally mm. and uh, if this is really what you want and it's a right fit then i'll tell you how you can do that beautiful buddy thank you so much um uh, for sharing today so uh, it, it's we're relatively new friends over the last six months i i'm i'm loving where this friendship is going i've been was introduced to you first by a great mutual friend of ours, Russ Rosen, who really, yes. um, it was interesting. I trust Russ and he just said, you know, Robbie just has a heart of gold and he worked so damn hard for me um, as, as well. And he, he really loved his experience working with you as, yeah. as well. And that's enough for me to want to spend more time with you as, as well. Yeah. Um, Robbie, any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience before we check out for today? I do actually, and um, just if looking at uh, current times and what's going on and, and with COVID and pandemics and things like that, yeah. um, I think it's a responsibility as a natural healthcare provider to, to scale our message and scale our impact. Um, mm. And no, there's been no more important time than now. So if, if anything, I would encourage you to look at the online space to get our message which um, I believe is more in line with the truth out to the masses because yeah. they're getting programmed. Um, if, if we don't do anything, those people are going to get programmed by somebody else that, that doesn't have their best interests at heart. So I think we, we, it's time for us to step up and uh, break through our imposter syndromes and say, you know what, we actually have a paradigm that uh, is based on truth. You don't have to agree with it, but this is what it is. Um, and, and let's use the online uh, as a leverage to get that that message out. And it's never been easier and it's never been more important. So it's not about, you know, we talk about money and six figures and seven figures and taking holidays, but it's you've really got to get to a point where it's not about us. It's about the people that are going to be on the other side of that screen and, and learning the stuff that you already know um, and take that responsibility seriously. And if you're if your major driving force is improving the lives of others, you will be successful. That's, that's a given. Yeah. What a great way to finish. Buddy, thanks for all that you do. Um, until next time, stay well. Yeah. Thanks, Angus. Have a great day. See you, mate. Bye. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast, you have to come and check out the Community Influencer Program. It's my monthly coaching program where we take all this material and I'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to apply, implement, systematize, and help guide you and your practice to the next level. Now you can join me on over at adiomedia.com forward slash join. That's adiomedia.com forward slash join. I'd love to see you in there.